In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a counting machine like this. So the idea is you've got two buttons here. You can um, count that value up and down. And at midnight, it will add a new bar to the graph starting from zero, and you can flick this up or not. So for instance, you might want to use it for um, counting the number of times something happens. Maybe your coworker is being annoying. Um, so you can like tick this up. After a few days, you'll have a nice graph of everything that's happened, and you'll be able to export this information as well. So um, to get started, you need a Esprino Pixel.js board, which is one of these, and you need it connected to the Esprino IDE. I have it connected by web Bluetooth. There's a whole bunch of instructions on how to do this, but it's, it's pretty easy, especially if you're on Mac OS. So um, we've got this we want to start off by writing some code that will simply count up and count down. So we'll create an array for the days and we'll put a single day in it, which is currently counting at zero. And we'll have a variable which is an index into that called days. And we'll just make it equal to days.length minus one, which at the moment will be that element, which is zero. So make a function called counter or count and we have a variable called direction and direction will be one or naught depending on which way you want to go so just say days brackets today and we increment it by the direction and then we'll say um we'll just make stop people going below zero so if days brackets delay is less than naught make it equal to naught and now we just want to update the display so we'll make a function called draw um, now pixel.js has a built-in variable called g, uh, which is a graphics. So we'll say g.clear and g.flip, which will take the contents of the, the memory and actually put it on the screen. And now we just want to say draw string. And we'll say draw string with days brackets today. And to start off, when we upload it immediately, we want it to draw the current state. So now we'll see some very small text at the top. Um, it's not actually listening to any of the buttons at the moment, nothing is calling count. But if I call count one, uh, it will keep incrementing that, that text that we see there. The so next step, we make it react to buttons. We use something called set watch. And we'll just create an arrow function, which calls count up when button two, which is this button is pressed. And we'll make sure it repeats. Um, by default, it will only get called once. Uh, so the first, the first click would work, the second click wouldn't. Um, so now we do button three, which is this one, and minus one, which will count down. So if we send this, we'll see it, it counts up. Great. Um, but that text is tiny. So what we want to do is to kind of move it around a bit and maybe have a heading and stuff. So um, we'll use a bigger font uh, called a vector font, which we can actually resize. I'll make that 30 pixels high. Uh, we'll set the font back because we do want to use the small fonts for other stuff as well. And um, and then we'll start drawing some titles and stuff. So we probably want to maybe say count at the top or, you know, whatever you're counting, you could change that. And we want to say um, the current date. So to find the current date, uh, we can just say new date um, and we'll get this text. Uh, so we actually want to convert this to a string and we just want to get the first bit of that string which will be like that far and we want to be able to get the other character just in case we've got two digits in our date and finally we'll trim it back down so now we have that date we can we can just use that um, so now we all these things are going to be left aligned Ideally, we'd have them nicely aligned on the center. So we'll create a variable called mid, which will be our center. Uh, and then we'll, we'll give all these an X coordinate and like a Y coordinate. So we want that one to go a little bit after the top one. And then we want that one to go after all of them. Okay. Um, so now we just want to middle align it, which we can do with set font line which will do centered and um, top aligned here. You can also add rotation, things like that. So now, uh, hopefully, falls well, we'll see something a bit more sensible. 
we see the current date. Um, by the way, you don't immediately get the date updated. You have to go to settings and communications and click set current time in here. Um, so that when you upload, it sets the computer's clock to, um, to a screen nose clock. And actually this is a bit high still, so we'll move that up a bit. But you get the idea, we've now got this counter, we can click it up and click it down. And now we just need to add the graph. So there's a little graph library built into Esprino. Um, all you have to do is um, take the example, which will give us something like this. And we'll just paste it in here after we've written everything else. Um, as this is, this will use the whole screen. Um, so we just want it to use the rightmost bit. So we'll give it an X coordinate and we'll make that X coordinate um, the middle of the text times two. So the middle of the text was here, middle of the text times two will be over here. Um, and we'll just give ourselves like a bit of fake data just so we can see it working. So it takes a little longer to upload now because it's uploading the graph library. And it's saying here that I've um, data isn't defined, which it isn't. What we actually want to do is to graph days instead. So here you go, you've got this working. Um, now if I click this up and down, we should see the um, the day counter working. Um, so only things we want to change here are these numbers don't make any sense. So we'll remove the grid bit from here. And also we can't see the top marking on here because it would be off the screen. So we'll just move the graph down a little bit from the top. Um, and that's basically us done. So I'll upload that. Um, the next step is just to detect when we're at midnight. Um, and when we hit midnight, we just add another bar to the graph. So there are a few different ways you could do this, um, but we're just gonna go for a really simple day. We're just gonna check what the current day of the week is. So we'll say current day, new date, dot get day. And then we'll add a function called check day. And this function we'll call maybe every hour and um, we'll just make it check what the current day is compared to the actual day. So we'll say if current day isn't day, then we want to um, add another value to days, which we'll do by just pushing it onto the end. And then we set up today to be the current day that's right on the end. And finally, we, we want to update the screen. So all we want to do now is you set interval to call this every so often. It doesn't have to be called very often, so we'll maybe check it every every hour. So say check day, and this value is in milliseconds. So you've got a um, thousand milliseconds in a second, 60 seconds in an hour, in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. Um, that's all we need. So obviously we can't see this working, but we can call it ourselves using the left-hand side of the IDE. It's not doing anything now because the day is the same, but we can we can kind of convince it the day is different by setting current day to something completely random. Um, so now uh, this if statement will um, will be different, and we can we can test it. Uh, and so actually, what we found is if I do this. Great, it works, it has the other column and then we can add more things in here. But um, but actually every hour it's gonna keep adding because I haven't set current day to day. Um, so the final thing is how do we now export this data? Um, so our data is just sitting here in a variable called days um, and you can, you can pull that out, that's fine. But maybe you want something that's in more of a, um, a format that you could actually use in a spreadsheet. Uh, and one of those formats that's really good is a comma separated variable. Basically all your variables are separated by commas and you've got a nice table. So we'll create something called 2CSV and we'll just iterate over all of the, um, all of the days. So days length, And we'll use console.log, which will print it out on the left-hand side. 
and you know most simply we would just want to output a number plus um, a comma plus the actual the value of the days uh, so if we do this and run it we'll see that that comes up which is is good but we might want to know the actual date so we can do that by um, creating a new date object um, so if I if I look at date.now, this is the number of milliseconds since 1970. If I do new date, date.now, we'll get what the time is at the moment. But if I now add, um, we've, we've decided that that's the amount of milliseconds for an hour. If I add an hour to that, it will obviously show a new hour. So basically all we want to do is, um, is do what we did here to get the date, um, but actually subtract a day from each one of these. So we'll basically take that code here, uh, right, and we'll create a new variable called date. Uh, we might as well just save now as a date.now as a variable. Um, Actually, let's let's work out the start day. So it's date dot now minus. Um, so this is number for an hour. So this will be the number for a day, and we know that we had that many days. Um, but one of those days is today, so it's one less. So um, so that's good. So now we just work out date by saying bar date is new date with the start start plus i times this which is the number of hours in a which is the number of milliseconds in a day so if we now try this function uh, obviously i haven't printed that Now we'll find that um, all of these dates are correct. Uh, and that's basically all we need. If you want this to work from scratch, you know, you just remove these so that you have literally just a single day when it starts up and no pre-filled information. Um, and you're good to go. So this is single day, next day it'll come and so on. And then when you want to get this information, you just connect with the web ID again and you click, you um, run to CSV like this. And obviously there's just one day in it at the moment. So um, yeah, that's how you make a, um, a little counter. Please um, subscribe because I'm going to be doing an awful lot more of these tutorials. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. All of the, um, all of the sample code and documentation and everything that's needed will be linked below the YouTube video. Thanks.